Hello everyone. Welcome to Informatica support videos. My name is Indranil Gupta Chaudhary and today I will be telling you about how to configure B2B data exchange to connect to a remote power center domain. The agenda for the video is we can configure B2B data exchange running on one of the machine to connect to power center which is running on another machine. I'll tell you about the steps which needs to be followed and the demo of the procedure involved. So what are the steps which we need to follow to do this? The very first step that has to be done is changing the DX configuration properties. Uh, you need to search for dx.rmi.host and in place of localhost you need to provide the data exchange host name. Now DX configuration properties exist in two locations and it needs to be done in both the locations. I will show you uh, how to do it in my demo. Second is you need to add the Java classes in Java SDK class path which has to be done in the integration service. So you need to open the admin console, go to the integration service and under the processes tab there should be Java SDK class path property. We need to add those classes in the Java SDK class, pro class path property. We need to create an environment variable dx underscore server underscore url which will be like rmi colon double slash so localhost localhost if if it exists in the same server because it exists in different servers we need to provide the dx server and the default rmi port is 18095 uh, so whatever port you have mentioned for the rmi you can check it in the dx configuration dot properties so we need to provide that in the same dx server url environment variable now this has to be done in integration service and the last is we need to see in the java security file in the power center if permissions are allowed for all the domains to interact now let me show you the demo so as you can see this is the server where i have installed data exchange so i will go to the dx home directory under conf where I will see dx configuration dot properties. So I'm going there. I'm in the conf directory and you can see here dx configuration dot properties. So let me edit that. So here we need to search for the dx RMI port. As you can see the DX RMI host is local host and RMI port mention is 18095. So I will edit this file now. So I am editing the file now. And in place of local host, I will add the DX server host name and the, sorry the IP address to be precise. So I have added it and I will save the file. Now this has to be done in two locations as I said earlier. So now let me go to the new location. So this is the another location which I was talking about which is DX home directory Apache Tomcat slash shared slash classes. Oops, the directory was wrong that time. So now, inside classes, we have to make the same changes. There is no difference in this, uh, what we made in the configuration file in uh, DX home directory, conf, and in this file. So it has to be always same. So here is my RMI host and I will again change it to the IP address which is 10.75.152.171 in my case and I will save this file. So that was the only change required at the DX server end. It will require a restart so you can just go ahead and restart the DX. Now let me log into admin console and show you what what are the changes that needs to be made for the integration service to recognize 
this server that dx is installed in. So I am at the integration service. First, I need to go to the processes tab. So here, so in the Java SDK class path, I will add the Java classes that are required. So I have added them and click OK. So all the jars which uh, is under data exchange power center lib, uh, I have added all of them here. Now I need to add an environment variable. So click on new. The variable name would be TX server URL. And the value would be the RMI colon double slash the TX server IP address colon 18095, the port number. So it is saved now. This will require an IS restart. So now the last step remaining is uh, we need to go to the, uh, the inst power center installation directory under which there is java slash jre slash lib slash security. Here we need to check the file. The file name is java.policy. Here uh, need to find the pattern permission java dot security dot all permissions. So that's a standard extension to get all the permissions by default and which will be in the grant section and here as you can see that it is already added so I don't need to do anything different here. This pretty much takes care of everything that we need to do. With that I come to the end of the video. So the reference can be found in the KB123200. We would love to hear from you. Please write, it, write to us using support videos at informatica.com or use the Twitter handler Info support. Thank you for your time.